of the sixth two-day Dura lecture series. The topic for today's lecture is Comrades at Crossroads, Nehru and Bose. Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhashchan Bose were the two tall charismatic leaders of the Indian national movement after Gandhi, who had set the anti-colonial momentum across India. Both had affluent background. Nehru went to Harrow and Bose to a European school, with a, uh, a European school meant for English and Anglo Indian students, and later changed to school with Indian teachers with Hindi and Oriya. Nehru did law from inner, inner temple and Bose reluctantly ISIS. Both during their mid 20s engaged themselves in national movement. Both gave up lucrative careers. One had no time to practice law, and another resigned from ICS, considering not comfortable with the national scene. C.R. Das, an extremist leader, was political guru of Bose, and Nehru, although was of extremist view within the Congress, but came under the spell of Gandhi. Both, with the vision of socialism, could have worked together, but Nehru was of an indecision and he could not see his destiny without Gandhi. And both could not be manipulated. He was impatient and wanted action. And Gandhi failed to cast a spell on him, despite both being conscious of his persona and popularity and presence for the undergoing national movement. Bose was criticized for his contact with dictators and communists, but he was as committed a democrat and socialist as Nehru. The Indian National Army that he raised, region or religion, was of no consideration. To both Nehru and Bose, what mattered most was the freedom of them. They could have worked together and made history as comrades and arms. But both could not get the trust of Gandhi. And perhaps Nehru considered politics too complex and its limitations at that time. If Nehru was the architect of modern India, then Bose, in his martial dress of the Indian National Army, was a popular hero and liberator and continued to inspire nationalism through the two words, Jai Hind, that he coined. Nehru, after each 15th, 15 August rest day speech, red fort speech, would end by saying Jai Hind three times and ask the audience to repeat with him a practice which has continued ever since. Is that symbolic of his recognition of his comrade? To discuss Nehru and Bose and their relationship, and why it failed to blossom, we have Professor Rudanshu Mukherjee. Professor Rudanshu Mukherjee is Professor of History and Vice Chancellor of Ashoka University. Earlier, he taught at Calcutta University. He has held visiting appointments at Princeton University, Manchester University, <coughs> and University of California, Santa Cruz. He was the editor of the editorial pages of Telegraph Calcutta and continues in that role as a consultant. He has extensively worked on the left movement in India. He has authored Awad in Revolt, 1857-1858, A Study of Popular Resistance, the Spectra of Violence, the 1857 Kanpur Massacre, Mangal Pandey, Brave Martyr or Accidental Hero, Art of Bengal, a vision defined, 1955-75. He has edited the Penguin Gandhi Reader and co-edited Trade and Politics and the Indian Ocean World. A recent book, Nehru and Bose, The Perder Life, is a must. Thank you for being here this evening and for 
bestowing on me the honor to de deliver the sixth Viraj lecture this evening. <coughs> I intend to narrate in the course of the next 40 minutes or so the story of a friendship that does not quite blossom that wither in the mind. And but I use the word friendship advisedly because the conventional idea of the relationship between Nehru and Bose is that they were rivals, there was a great bit of hostility and animosity between the two of them. And if you are a Bengali like me, then you will know that these are very strongly held views in Bengali. 